So in this video I'm going to talk about Wilson disease as a part of a chronic hepatitis or chronic liver diseases. Okay, we'll start with the definition of Wilson, the normal copper metabolism. Okay, I'm going to talk about the clinical presentation of Wilson, the diagnosis and treatment of Wilson disease. So let's start with the definition of Wilson disease. The first thing I'm going to tell you that it is an autosomal recessive inherited disorder okay so it's uh, so, a recessive disease and the exact defect in wilson disease in a chromosome 13 okay and the exact defect in chromosome 13 that will lead to a defect in the atp 7b gene okay i'm going to talk about in a moment okay so so it is an autosomal recessive disease or defect on a chromosome 13 okay atp 7b gene that characterized by what by impaired copper excretion so the problem in wilson disease is about copper metabolism copper excretion the copper should be excreted by the bile and other things okay so in wilson disease we have impaired copper excretion from the liver and that will lead to copper accumulation in the liver and not just in the liver in other organs like in a brain in the liver again in the kidneys in the eyes and the heart okay and that will lead to a lot of problems in the kidney renal tubular acidosis in the eyes some symptoms in the liver hepatic uh, disorders i'm going to talk about it okay so this is the definition of Wilson disease actually it is a rare disease about one to uh, one hundred thousand uh, okay so now let's start with the copper metabolism to understand the pathology in wilson disease we have to understand the normal copper metabolism okay to understand the defect you have to understand the normal normally the copper is absorbed from the stomach and the sto small intestine okay after absorption of copper from the stomach and the small intestine will it will go to the liver in the liver uh, it may go uh, in one uh, it will go into two pathways the first one it will incorporate with atp 7b gene or atp 7b protein and the incorporation of the cover with this protein the atp 7b protein will form what we call the seroplasmin okay seroplasmin so the seroplasmin is a complex of copper plus the atp 7b gene the cellular plasmin will be excreted in bile okay and then in feces so this is a one way that the copper will be excreted from the liver in bile and in feces okay this is the first part of copper excretion the second part is that copper will incorporate with other proteins okay and it will excrete it in a blood okay in kidney in brain and the heart go for all these organs okay so what really happens in wilson disease that as i told you we have a chromosomal defect in chromosome 13 we have a defect in the atp 7b gene okay the gene that incorporate with the copper in the liver to be excreted in the bile so if we have a defect in that protein then the copper that uh, w w that was excreted in the liver or excreted in the bile and the feces in the liver will not be excreted anymore in the bile okay so we will have an accumulation of the copper in the liver and the accumulation of the copper in the liver will lead to oxidative harm effect on the hepatocytes and that will lead to the risk factors of the wilson disease the hepatitis and so on okay furthermore the copper will accumulate in the in the liver and that will lead to shifting of copper excretion in the bile to copper excretion in the kidney so we will have accumulation of the copper in the kidney in the blood in the brain in the heart and other organs okay in the eyes for example okay and this will lead to a distinctive clinical presentation in each one of these organs that will have the copper accumulation in it so let's now move to the clinical presentation of the copper accumulation or of wilson disease 
actually clinical presentation uh, of Wilson disease uh, Wilson disease rare to be before uh, three years old okay or three years of age uh, mostly it will happen after five years okay it may uh, I told you that cover may accumulate in the liver leading to hepatic manifestations or in the brain leading to neuropsychiatric manifestations and these are the most prominent two uh, presentations of the uh, Wilson disease actually the hepatic symptoms of the Wilson's disease are, are mostly in young children okay that are before five years of old of age okay but older than three years okay so we always remember that the hepatic manifestations of Wilson disease are mostly in young children young children but the neuropsychiatric manifestations more are more in adults or adults okay till the age of 14 so the hepatic manifestations are in young children the neuropsychiatric manifestations are in adults okay so let's start with the hepatic manifestations we have a oxidative damage to hepatocyte we may have asymptomatic hepatomegaly we may have hepatitis like picture with jaundice portal hypertension fulminant liver failure hemolytic anemia elevated liver enzyme so it is a hepatic disease okay so you can expect anything in uh, hepatic liver failure or acute liver failure jaundice portal hypertension with all its manifestations the elevated liver enzymes fulminant liver failure hemolytic anemia and so on okay so this is the, these are the hepatic manifestations of liver disease now the neuropsychiatric manifestations actually the copper will accumulate in the pain uh, in the basal ganglia and the thalami okay so you may see it in the mri uh, accumulation of copper or hypotensity in these areas the basal ganglia okay you may see it, some personality changes uh, handwriting may change the speech may be slurred or and so on the gait may be a toxic gait you may see uh, signs of parkinsonism okay parkinsonism like uh, bradykinesia uh, cogwheel rigidity okay all anything that you may think uh, about uh, as a neuropsychiatric uh, uh, disease may happen with copper accumulation or wilson disease depression bipolar disorders and so on okay accumulation of copper in the eyes will lead to what we call the kaiser fleischer rings the Kaiser Fleischer rings. You can see the brown thing here or the yellow. Okay, this is the Kaiser Fleischer ring. Here in the normal eye, we have no Kaiser Fleischer rings. Okay, so these are the clinical presentations of the uh, Wilson disease, the hepatic, and the neuropsychiatric, the extra hepatic. Please remember then the most important thing to remember that the neuropsychiatric manifestations more are more in adult sense, the hepatic manifestation are more in younger adults the younger children now let's move the diagnosis of uh, Wilson's disease diagnosis are two things the screening of the uh, Wilson's and the diagnostic test actually we can do ser serum seroplasmin of course you expect it to be low serial seroplasmin ser because there is no corporation or corporation of the a copper with the ATP 7B gene, so we will have low or no serum seroplasmin. Serum copper, you expect it to be high because of the accumulation of the copper in the blood, in the liver, and in other organs. You may take 24 hours urine collection, and of course, it will be high because I told you that the part of the copper that will not be secreted as a feces, uh, as pile in feces will be excreted in the kidneys and other organs okay so all these are screening things the serum seroplasmin low okay the serum copper will be high 24 hours urine collection we have high copper in it so 
this thing to suspect that we have the uh, Wilson disease but the diagnostic test is the by the liver biopsy okay what distinctively we see in the liver biopsy the quantitative copper accumulation liver biopsy okay also if you have uh, the uh, appropriate techniques you can see the presence of genetic mutations at the diagnostic test okay ATP 7B gene chromosome 13 now the treatment of Wilson disease depends on the status of the liver if the liver is comp compensating the disease well compensated disease you can chelate the uh, copper you can decrease the absorption or you have to decrease the absorption of copper and you have to have some dietary restrictions to cover okay so the first thing you have to restrict copper intake because the problem is in copper metabolism so you have to restrict the copper intake okay so this is the first so the other restriction of copper okay you have to restrict uh, copper uh, fish uh, copper is present in fish and mushroom and etc okay so and you can give chelating agents like what like penicillin d or trinitin okay okay so first of all you have to decrease the copper intake then you have to decrease the copper absorption by giving zinc okay giving zinc orally will compete uh, with the copper absorption and that will decrease the copper absorption that will solve a part of the problem the third thing you have to chelate the copper that already absorbed by giving penicillin d or trientin okay in decompensated liver if you have a cirrhotic liver chronic liver failure decompensated liver you can do liver transplant and actually it is a curable in uh, wilson disease most of cases you have no recurrency okay because the problem is in the liver can reply that cannot get rid of uh, of the uh, copper now if after liver transplantation it will get rid of the again this is the uh, this graph is talking about the uh, wilson disease the problem the absorption uh, of copper is normal okay but the there is no incorporation of copper into cerebral plasmin and that will lead uh, to no bile excretion or feces excretion of copper in bile okay and that will lead to increased copper concentration in the hepatocyte result in overflow of copper into the blood okay so accumulation of copper here will lead to overflow of the copper into the blood into the brain into the liver uh, i'm sorry into the kidney and other organs that will lead to pathology of the wilson disease so this is all about wilson disease thank you very much for watching see you in the next video